University of Cambridge, you really want to go out on a punt. Unfortunately, we can't do that because the cam's flooded. But I can tell you, this city has been a seat of learning since 1209, and that's a full 760 years before Cambridge United were elected to the Football League. This university city attracts 3.5 million tourists from around the world every single year. There are no statistics, though, telling how many of them are attracted. Here, to the home of Cambridge United. And who better to give us a tour of the Abbey Stadium than the King of the Abbey himself, fans' favourite, John Taylor. Obviously, we won the championship uh, in 91. Uh, went to Wembley the year before, in the playoff final. Um, two cup quarter-finals, one here against Paris, which we lost. Uh, one nil and White Arsenal losing 2-1. Just four wonderful years and an almost unbelievable run from the fourth, third, second. We nearly made it in the Premiership first time up. And there was promotion again when you came back in the late 90s? Yeah, uh, with Roy and, and Parisi. Um, had a wonderful team here and uh, we uh, game, should have won the league really. We had some decent teams here, we had some decent players. And manager Ron Atkinson, you had Ron Yeah, Ron's been here a long time ago, way, way before me. I'm not that old as he thinks very much. Um, Roy's obviously been here, Robert McFarland, uh, 47 on Caps for England. So, you know, he's a legend in his own right. And, uh, yeah, been a few, few good players past these doors. Been naked in here, is he? Nice Rush story. right up your street, huh? So Cambridge, a city that attracts tourists and students from around the world, and a football club that attracts players from around the world. Time now to meet the manager, who speaks a language all his own. Go! Yes. It's a race to recover lost confidence. <laughs> Last season, John Beck saved Cambridge from relegation. With 13 points to date this season, a repeat of that achievement looks tough enough, let alone planning for the future. This is a, a long-term target of building a squad um, and we do think it will take two to three years before we can get a squad that is good enough to do anything. It's whether we're, we're bright enough and, and uh, hard-working enough to uh, keep on keeping on. <laughs> We want her to put in your mind about the three in midfield. He's a man with the mission statement, the 21st century's take two of the John Beck of the 90s when he led Cambridge into the spotlight. We were doing gimmicky things like cold showers and uh, it was great for the press, great for the media and it highlighted this little football club into almost stardom. <laughs> can you do that again? Well, I have to say we can, but... Um, I think it's going to be a, a, a lot slower this time. His immediate concern is that they've only picked up one point away and were humiliated at Port Vale, that 5-0 result doing little to endear Beck to the supporters. The fact is well known that there are maybe 50% of the supporters are not sure about John Beck and his management style. They're thinking it's going to be long ball, direct ball. Uh, and I have to say that... Um, you know, some of our performances, they're, they're certainly justified. You know, I'm sure that uh, uh, the people that are criticising um, have every right because they pay the money. Uh, I'd like to thank the ones that are backing us 100%. Midweek, Cambridge had the chance to improve their points tally, playing away against Swindon. But they lost 2-0. It's the hardest pill to swallow when you know you played you know relatively well and uh, had maybe three or four of the best chances in the game and not convert them and come away with nothing. It's a sort of bitter pill for the players to swallow and certainly supporters and, and, and for you. And well, I've, obviously me, you know, because I'm a, I'm a true supporter of Cambridge United as well. <laughs> I support him 100%, but I think he's got a long way, a long way to go to get it right. Do you think John Beck can sort it out? No, so say not. It looks very grim for us, but things might brighten up before Christmas. If, you, if it goes on like this, and you know the, the points ratio is the same as, as the season goes on, well, we get towards Christmas, and you know, in, in most clubs, in most situations, you would think the manager's in some trouble. There is no such thing as success and failure. It is just about learning and feedback, and if we continue just to 
uh, learn uh, over each success and failure hurdle, uh, we will be ultimately successful. But I think it will have to be patient and supporters will have to be patient and the board of directors will have to be patient uh, for us to ultimately get that success that you know we know we will get. So John Beck has some way to go to retain the confidence of Cambridge United supporters. Later in the programme we'll be... Welcome back to Football Second, the roving football programme that takes you to every ground in Division 2. This week's Theatre of Dreams is the Abbey Stadium, though some supporters say they feel those dreams are turning into nightmares. With Cambridge United having only won three times in 15 games this season, fans such as John Seymour recall with some longing the club's happier days. Well, this is where I first stood in 1974 when I first came to the Abbey Stadium. That was the time when Big Ron Atkinson was in charge of the team and boy, what a side they was. We had tremendous players there, Brendan Batson, Steve Fallon, Steve Spriggs, you name it. Legends at this club, all of them. 1991, it's the FA Cup fifth round. Cambridge United versus Sheffield Wednesday. And to many people's surprise, Cambridge United are already three goals to the good. And then, Dion Dublin intercepted a very bad back pass. Bang! Straight into the bottom corner of this net. 1999 and Cambridge United already surpassed a lot of people's expectations by knocking out Watford in the first round of the Wellington Cup. In the second round, second leg, they're at home to Sheffield Wednesday. Alex Russell floated in a superb free kick to which Trevor Benjamin met with a full meet and then a tremendous goal and this place absolutely erupted. It seems though that the club's glory days are a fast fading memory. I've missed two games in the last ten seasons. And that's it, home and, and away? Home and away, home and away, yes. But now you don't want to go? It's not a matter of not wanting to go, it's a matter of that I don't like the product that's on offer. I don't like that style of play that the present manager is adopting. And I know that an awful lot of the fans are really, really fed up with what they're watching. Um, the internet sites are absolutely full of it day after day after day. I had two friends come round to see me on Saturday after the Colchester match at Lair Road. They've been to 367 consecutive matches together and they say they're not going to go anymore because they simply can't watch that style of play any longer. The home attendances are down 1,000 to 1,200 people per home game. This club can't afford to lose that sort of money and something sooner rather than later I think has to be done one way or the other. These fans here at Cambridge United, they don't protest. What they will do is vote with their feet. They'll walk away, and they have walked away, and more will follow if something isn't done shortly. We have the players here who can play, if they're allowed to. And that is a big question, are they allowed to? The long ball game is dead now. Nobody plays it. Even Wimbledon, the major exponents of the long ball, they don't play it anymore. They play football, and that is the way forward. And with the club hovering around the relegation zone, John feels the manager needs results, and fast. Without wins, you're fired, aren't you? You're sacked. It's simple. It's, that, is, that is what's going to happen here. Can, the big question is, the fans are asking, can we hold on till Christmas? I don't think so, because I think we'll be too far adrift to do anything by Christmas. I don't think we can afford to give them 23, 24 games. So something's got to happen sooner rather than later. Either him to change his tactics or the club to change their manager? Absolutely. Either way, either way. I think if Mr Beck doesn't change the tactics and start playing open, attractive football that the players want to play, then he will lose his job, I've got no doubt about that. So that's the view of one of the Cambridge supporters. This is a road show for Cambridge fans united. They're trying to raise money for the redevelopment of the stadium. And while I try to recruit some more members for this very fine organisation, it's time to look back at some more of the action.